Well, hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, Andrew Herman here, the campus pastor of the Lionel Lakes campus, and I am so excited uh, that you're joining us this morning, jumping in with me uh, for, for this morning's daily devotional. So it's good to see all of you jumping on. Uh, keep jumping on. Good morning, everybody. Um, well, I mean, this whole week, uh, we've been talking all about generosity uh, and not just the type of, of generosity that's transactional, just one thing done. No, but the, the type of generosity that's transformational, the, uh, the, the type of generosity that changes our own lives and, uh, and the lives of the people around us. And so that's what we're going to stay focused on today. Uh, we're going to stay focused on, on generosity, that, that idea, and tomorrow as well, which tomorrow, I got to tell you, tune in tomorrow because we're in for a treat. We're all in for a treat uh, because our music pastor, Jeremy Sanowski, uh, is going to be leading the morning devotional. So make sure you, you join us tomorrow for another one all about generosity uh, from Jeremy. Uh, but let me ask you a question. What's the, what's the earliest act of generosity uh, you remember being on the receiving end of what's the earliest one. So maybe uh, it was as a kid. I want you to write these uh, in the in the comments uh, so that I can read. I won't probably catch them all right now, but I want to read them later. Uh, so maybe you remember being spoiled by your your grandparents uh, as a kid. They gave you a gift or um, or some sort of candy they just lavished on you. Uh, maybe it was your sister uh, who gave you the uh, the largest. Uh, side of the sandwich uh, for lunch one day, uh, or maybe uh, maybe it was your friend that lets you be the line leader in uh, in the classroom, or you're just given pit, first pick rights uh, out on the playground. So I just want you to list out like what's the earliest act of generosity you remember being on the receiving end of. So go ahead and put that in the comments. Uh, mine actually <clears throat> was in elementary school. Uh, I remember, uh, actually, I, I, I had this moment where I saved up my own money. I went out and I bought a Mongoose BMX bike, and I was so pumped about it. Had it for one week, and it got stolen out of my garage. Absolutely, I'm not, I'm not kidding. This is actually what happened. Had that bike for one week, and it got stolen out of my garage, uh, and I was devastated. Uh, but a week after it was stolen... My dad came home from work, and uh, he had been telling the story of what took place uh, just the week before of my bike being stolen to all of his coworkers, and and one of them responded and and just told him, "Hey, I I have a I have a bike in my garage. It belongs to my uh, it belongs to my my son who's grown and out of the house, and uh, and it's just sitting in the garage. And you know what? She gave it to me." She actually gave me uh, that bike and that Diamondback mountain bike. It wasn't the same Mongoose uh, BMX bike that I had, uh, you know, when, that I saved my money up for. But that, that Diamondback mountain bike, I rode all the way up through college. It was a little big for me uh, when I first got it, but I rode it all the way through college. And I will never forget uh, that one act of generosity from my dad's coworker in elementary school. And so generosity is, is memorable. Uh, it's something that you remember uh, when you're on that receiving end of. Uh, and I, like I said, I will never forget it. Uh, but 1 John is where we're going to be uh, spending a little bit of time. 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 says this. We know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? Uh, not, not exactly the, the verse you probably expected me to read uh, when talking about generosity, was it? Um, but as we, as we read that, as I read that, I often think about reputation. And I don't know about you, I, but I want to, I would love to be known as somebody who is compassionate, who is sacrificial and generous, like we've been talking about. And, I, and I'd like to think that, that many of you would probably uh, love to be thought about that way 
as well. Uh, we want to be around those types of people, don't we? It's, it's attractive. Generosity is not only memorable, but it's, it's attractive. Uh, but this, this passage of scripture raises the bar of generosity because it's taking us to Jesus' status and reminding us that he, he went a level far above and he laid down his life uh, for us. And if we're going to be like him in the area of generosity, uh, we need to be prepared to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters, as, as it says in, in verse 16. But here's the deal. 99.9% .9 of us will never be put in a position uh, where we have to literally sacrifice our lives. I know that there, there's stories of that happening, uh, but in the grand scheme of our lives, most of us, uh, I think I can confidently say that, most of us will never experience a moment like that. Uh, so what does that actually then look like as we, uh, as we read that and apply that to our lives? What, what does it actually mean to, uh, to lay down our lives uh, for our brothers and sisters and do what John says there? I think the second half of that uh, passage, the verse 17, then gets really practical uh, and helps us get to that point. It, it talks about our money and it talks about our stuff uh, in verse 17. If we have something that someone else could benefit from and we're al already living life well, then we should show compassion um, by giving up or helping or providing uh, for somebody else. So the question that's posed in there, if, if you don't do that, if you don't provide or don't uh, show compassion to somebody, is God's love really in us? Uh, and so I, as I read that passage of scripture, uh, I believe that living a life of generosity gets practical, like we see in verse 17, because generosity takes practice. Uh, we have to get better at it. Uh, because if we do, we have the opportunity to show God's love to other people. Uh, we do it by laying down our lives, uh, not our physical, breathing, living lives uh, like, like we see Jesus laying his life down for us. But, um, but there are other ways that we can, we can lay down our lives. Often we talk about generosity, and the first thing that comes to mind for many people is money uh, or, or what we earn. Uh, but our lives, I, I, I don't know about you, but our lives... I don't think are made up of only money or only our jobs or only uh, what we earn throughout our weeks. Our lives actually include our free time, our skills and gifts, our hobbies, our interests, uh, and yeah, our, our possessions and our money. And so there are so many areas in our lives that we can practice generosity and, and actually battle the opposition to generosity and sacrifice, which is selfishness. Uh, I think breakfast is a great example of this. I'm really stingy uh, when it comes to food. Uh, you, can, you can ask my wife, who, by the way, is one of the most generous people that I know, uh, and not just because she's my wife uh, that I'm saying that, but she is so generous and giving, and I'm constantly learning from her and watching her as she uh, lives her life. Uh, but when I think about breakfast, like I said, I'm really stingy in food, so you can ask her. She knows it. Um, I, but I pay attention to, to actually the portions when she's dishing food uh, because I always like a little more or just to make sure that like things are, are even between us two or if we have other people over. Uh, but when I dish the food, um, I, I take the better toasted piece of bread, uh, the better looking one, the bigger uh, piece of, of bread. And, and I always take a little bit more eggs. Um, you know, she's, she's fine. Uh, but I'll, I'll do that. And so one of the ways when it comes to even just breakfast that I've started to practice generosity is that when I'm dishing, I change my mindset and I actually give her a little bit more eggs. And I give her the better and bigger piece of toast, whether she likes it or not, uh, or whether she even knows it or not, that's something I will do in the morning uh, to, to practice generosity. And it's so small and, and dumb, I know, um, but hopefully I'm not alone when it comes to, comes to the food and, and portions. Uh, but that simple practice uh, gets me more in the mindset of generosity. 
Uh, just that one little thing that I can do in the morning gets me ready uh, to practice generosity. So if I can lay down my, my life and my own desire for the area of breakfast food, uh, I think it's a start. I think it's a, a great start to keep rolling uh, in that, that practice of generosity. So what's it for you? What's something from your life, just simple, that you can begin laying down your life for the sake of someone else today or this week? Uh, let me just give you some examples. Maybe it's your phone that you lay down. Take the 10 minutes that you'd be scrolling uh, and use it to listen to your kids. Uh, ask your significant other a question or, and have a conversation. Uh, call a friend. Actually call them on the phone and have a conversation versus scrolling. Maybe it's your sleep that you need to lay down. Uh, get out of bed. Don't keep laying down, but get out of bed uh, 30 minutes earlier uh, than, than you normally do and do the chore, the house, house chore that somebody used, actually usually does. Um, maybe it's your free time. Offer to do a grocery run uh, for a family with a newborn or someone who's sick. Uh, serve at a church, at, at our church, uh, at one of our campuses, what I mean, um, or, or at an organization that you love uh, that's doing something great in your community. Plan and, and cook a dinner with your free time uh, so that your significant other can have their free time. Uh, those little things. Uh, maybe it's your money. And I know this is the one, like I said, that we often go to and probably is most difficult for many people. Uh, and you want to get to that place of being generous even with your money. Start practicing when you go out to get a coffee for yourself. Uh, text somebody, uh, who, who, a friend, text them and just say, hey, what can I get you? It's on me. Uh, and you'll drop it off. Uh, I think little things like that, little practices, uh, can put us in the mindset of of practicing generosity regularly. So as you think about this week, start practicing and building that muscle of laying down your just areas of your life uh, to benefit for uh, others. And I think that you'll find that it gets easier and easier as you do that, but it also gets more rewarding as you do that. Uh, and then when it comes time for uh, those bigger things, that we can sacrifice and lay down, I think it will be easier to be able to do that because we've already started those smaller practices uh, in our lives. And so we'll be ready to show compassion to others by our sacrifice, by our generosity when we've been practicing all along. So with that, let me pray for us uh, and, and we'll go out into our week or weekend uh, ready to take on some of those challenges with small practices uh, of generosity. Let's pray. God, I'm so thankful uh, for the opportunity to, to be with everybody right now uh, this morning. Uh, and, and we know that generosity is something that you want for our lives. Um, God, it's, it's sometimes difficult to practice uh, because we... We're selfish. Uh, we like our stuff. We like our uh, habits. We like our free time uh, and our uh, possessions. But God, um, you've asked us to lay down our lives. And so God, I just ask that you would help us to identify and to recognize moments this week uh, to, to lay down our lives, our holistic lives, uh, something within our life uh, so that we can care for and be compassionate towards others. So give us little opportunities uh, this, this weekend to do that. Uh, give us those moments to recognize when we can do that so that we can be more and more prepared to be compassionate in those larger areas uh, when it comes to laying down our lives and being generous and sacrificing. So God, I thank you for everybody. Uh, we ask you to bless them today as they go about their day. And it's all these things that we lift up and pray in your name. Amen. Amen, everybody. Well, keep practicing generosity and uh, don't miss tomorrow. I'm telling you, come here, Jeremy. Uh, but thanks for joining us this morning. We'll see you guys soon.